Well, joining me now to discuss this a bit further, our political reporter who's been covering this uh, court case, Aldrin St. Pierre. Aldrin, thanks so much for joining us. All right, so Sasa and CPS um, has been ordered, uh, to, or that contract uh, will be extended for 12 months, which also means that that declaration of invalidity is also extended. Yeah, well, that's definitely what it means. So over the next 12 months, um, CPS is still... Um, has been <coughs> has been ordered by the court to make sure that grants are paid. Remember that uh, Froneman's earlier judgment back in 2014, where he said that because um, CPS is uh, providing a service, a constitutional service, it is regarded as a quasi-judicial um, state organ. So it has an obligation to ensure that social grants are paid, and they have to make sure that there's no interruption in between um, the, the the grant system being taken over by new by a new uh, a service provider or even by, by, by Sasa itself. And quite interestingly though, is that in the judgment, Fruneman says that um, the new provider either than CPS, which means that unfortunately CPS won't be able to contend in, 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 in the new tender when that new tender is set out. They will be, they'll definitely not be one of the parties that should be considered by Sasa or the Social Development Department. And then Froneman also spoke about a joint evaluation on grants that, that will be carried out and that CPS must permit the auditors to have access to their accounts. What was their reaction? This, this is extraordinary. This is an extraordinary uh, um, level of oversight. Remember that yeah. Black Sash, which made the application, asked for such strict oversight and this is definitely happening there even you can see that the constitutional court the the justices even went a bit further and they are saying that there should be legal experts from both sides from both parties who um, who will be involved in evaluating the process of the contract and what's happening the auditor general has also been brought in but now we see that treasury has also been brought in and treasury has a role to play in terms of if cps because that's something else that the judgment acknowledges is that um, as a private company you also have a duty that um, while they, you need to ensure that um, that the rights of other people that you don't profit from the rights of people's rights who've been in, in, infringed, that you don't profit from them, you got to make sure that you also play uh, a critical role in ensuring that in terms of your own business that you don't pay out of your personal personal pocket. And that's why they've made the, that sub-clause there that, they are, um, that CPS will be allowed to meet Treasury and speak about the price of the contract. What about uh, the minister's personal role in this and will she be held liable? I mean, people are still calling for, for heads to roll and we saw that interview that you did there uh, with uh, the Sasa CEO just apologizing. I mean, will she have to pay costs? Will she be held personally responsible? I, I actually thought that um, from, from, from when you listen to the hearing and um, how there was that back and forth with Andrew Breitenbach who was presenting, representing the minister and Sasa, that. Um, the chief, well, the justices will be really harsh on the minister's failure, and it didn't come across as as, as strong as I expected. Like for instance, there's a part where Fronoman says um, the minister bears the primary responsibility to ensure Sasa fulfills its function. Its function, she appoints. She's the one that appoints the CEO. And like you wrote, like you read in the intro as well, um, the role of the minister. The sole reason that we are where we are at the moment is because of the failure yeah. of, of of the minister. And I just want to read something uh, quite interesting that that I picked up earlier on. Is that in terms of the order, there is this order that's set down by by Fronoman where he says. Um, the minister should explain by, by Friday next week why she should not be joined in a personal capacity in this case. He also goes further to say why she should not pay cost of the application from her own pocket. And this for me is quite interesting because if you're reading in conjunction with um, paragraph 74 and 75, which I just want to read quickly, it, it points to a fact that we might even see um, a judgment, an order being handed down or a judgment being handed down that finds the minister wanting. Um, the, this is now the full judgment that wasn't in the, in the, in, in, in the, in the, in the, in the minimum judgment or uh, the brief judgment that was handed down. In the full judgment it says that the office holder ultimately responsible for the crisis and the events that led to it is the person who holds the executive political officer, or office. Rather. It is the minister who is required in terms of the constitution to account to parliament. That is the minister and the minister's role alone. All these aspects require further scrutiny, but that can only be done after, um, after, after potentially affected parties are joined to the proceedings 
in their personal capaci capacities and given an opportunity to, to explain their conduct in relation to each of these issues. And um, Frunemann said in the, in the summary judgment that um, getting answers from the minister or even the minister's counsel why she failed to act back in 2016, April, why she failed to act in November 2016, uh, while October 2016, according to her own admission, when she found out about this, why did she yeah. fail to act that draw blank? Yeah, and I think that was the point that the justices kept hammering on to Andrew Breitenbach was, why has she not taken responsibility? Yeah. All right, very quickly, I want to look at the post office CEO. You spoke to him briefly. What do you think their role will be in this potentially in the future? And what did he say about the uh, judgment? Well, he's happy that um, there, there will be a smooth transition, as he calls it. Um, but um, quite clearly that um, uh, Mark Barnes went, or the post office went into this court as, as, as very, very ambitious. And that was mm. laid out by, by, by Chief Justice Mukwing Mukwing as well, that you guys a bit ambitious. However, though, um, Sasa is saying that um, they won't be leaving the post office out of this process as they try to determine whether they have their own personal capacity to be paying these grants or whether they should get another entity. And Mark Barnes's argument is that that entity that you get outside could be an entity within government considering that um, the post bank is owned by the state. Yeah. But an issue that was raised by the justices on Wednesday as well was that, listen, you have a post office which is an organ of state. You have Sasa which is an organ of state. Why are you guys here in court? Why don't you settle this mm. thing within cabinet? And that should be interesting to see exactly how this unfolds. And we mm. must know that that there's a lot, a lot of money involved in this contract. All right. Well, it's good to see that there is uh, a quite an extensive oversight that will come into this issue now. Definitely. Aldrin, thanks so much. Our political reporter, Aldrin St. Pierre, going uh, through that uh, Sasa judgment.